But to score at Wembley is one of the best feelings you can have. Here come the Rovers in search of an equaliser. They've got one from Marcus Stewart. It's bittersweet. Scoring at Wembley for the first time, brilliant. Losing a player final for the first time, didn't like the feeling. You get into a player final and then you look forward to, I think it was a week, week and a half's break. You're looking forward to getting your suits sorted out. You're looking forward to getting tickets. Your family and friends are calling you. Uh, and those sort of things go on. And you've got a train as well. It's hard to take your mind off the game itself, although, you know, and the training ground is your sanctuary at the times, because otherwise around the training routine, you're thinking about Wembley constantly. Um, so training was, I remember training being almost a sanctuary for myself. And then you get to the, the hotel, and I think we got here a day before the game. Um, I don't know where we stayed, because it's so long ago. But uh, I don't remember if we, for that, for that particular Wembley game, I don't remember if we came the day, no, we didn't, we came, we didn't come to Wembley the day before, we, we just, the manager decided to do it, John Ward at the time, decided to come to Wembley a little bit earlier and the lads can go out and soak in the atmosphere. Um, and that's what we did. Uh, I don't remember a lot about the change rooms before or after, people were nervous, I don't remember the team talk. Um, I just remember it was a really important game. Luckily for me, it was my second or third time playing at Wembley because I played there for England under 15s before and uh, England schoolboys uh, under 16 level. So I had a bit of experience of what it was like uh, with big crowds as well. Uh, but I remember both teams bringing massive crowds. The weather was like it is today, like it always generally in a playoff final. Tilson does well to hook the ball across and Bullock's in there. Scully, Booth, and it's field town in front. They deserve to be a goal ahead from one this year, leading up to half time. So for us to get a goal just before half time uh, must have been a dagger in the heart for those guys because they played really well. We got a goal against the run of play, went in a half time, you know, one each, and we didn't really deserve it, I don't think. Score at Wembley, which is my, so I've played there a couple of times before, but I'd never scored there. So to score at Wembley, where England played, where England won the World Cup, very patriotic, is one of the best feelings you can have. So that kind of took the edge off it for me, but yeah, it was, it was because as well, not just the goal itself, it got us back in the game to one each, and we went in half time all buoyed up and, and ready, to, ready to go for the second half with hopefully a bit of, mem bit, bit of momentum. And it is a tactical switch, we are told. Nick on the touchline here straight away in possession is done. And he floats one across here, moves in, Jepson's there, Billy's in. It's bittersweet, scoring at Wembley for the first time, brilliant. Losing a player final for the first time, didn't like the feeling. This by Dunn, but Huddersfield Town have taken the glory, it's a hat-trick for Warnock. Huddersfield Town go into Division 1 thanks to Chris Billy, 22 years of age, born in Huddersfield. So with that happened, that game happened, Huddersfield went to the Championship, obviously we stayed into League One. Uh, I had a season back at Bristol Rovers, I had a really good season and uh, towards the end of the year, end of the season as well, I had a, a phone call from my old assistant manager who left the previous season from Bristol Rovers to go and be assistant manager at Huddersfield with uh, Brian Horton. And he just called me and said, Marcus, how do you fancy coming to Huddersfield? We're you know, trying to build something here. New stadium just been built, which was called the McAlpine at the time. How do you fancy coming? So after I think about it and chat with people, and I, I, I wanted to go, yeah. And it felt the right thing to do at the time. And like you said before, I think, you know, the game the year before kind of, kind of put me on the map for Huddersfield fans, if you, if you like. So we didn't win the game, but I had quite a pretty good second half. I wouldn't say I was brilliant first half, even though I got the goal. Uh, I had a really good second half because we should have won it. So I think the fact that I was in the press and those fans seen me play the year before kind of gave me a little bit of a head start because they, they knew what I was all about. Uh, listen, it's, it's, it's a very happy time. Um, one of the best uh, without being successful from my point of view. Okay, I was successful, scored goals, but to I wouldn't get every, anything to be in this playoff, but I would, I would, I would have loved to have been in some sort of final with those guys uh, and with that club and those fans because everyone took me to the heart, everyone was friendly, everyone um, welcomed me, everyone 
could, were great to me. You know, there's, there's obviously there's times in a club when you're not doing too well, but I didn't hear too many boos. Um, I like to think my work rate kind of kept them on the side when I wasn't playing too well. Um, so yeah, I, I, my sons still live up there to this day. In Huddersfield, they play, one plays for Huddersfield Rugby Union. The other one played for Huddersfield Giants Rugby League. So um, I'm still up there quite often.